We welcome here to you today to Crown Glory, where I don't think it's written in a pamphlet or anything, but you are loved, right? Yeah. You're loved and appreciated and accepted yeah. by us and by God, right? Yeah. That's right. I, I, you know, in the mornings we wake up and sometimes we're really anxious, and it's Sunday and we're already thinking about Monday and what we got to do in the week. And uh, I'm just going to ask right now that you just take a moment to just. Take a couple of deep breaths. If you're feeling anxious or, uh, I don't know, uh, stressed or feeling any strife or anything, just take a a couple of deep breaths and breathe in because he inhabits in the praise of our people, of his people. And and as he enters here, I I like when I worship, I like to take deep breaths because I feel that I'm breathing in him and taking in him deep. As he takes me deeper, I breathe in him. And we just take a moment to breathe in and out and just relax and get ready to worship. Whether the song is fast or slow, it doesn't matter. We just take him in and let him carry us. And, and even though we're outside and you think we're, it's different than being inside, his spirit still flows. His, his spirit is upon us and, and you can feel it as he enters into us. I mean, he's always into us, but as he comes into us, stronger you feel his spirit upon you you feel his strength and you feel his joy and you feel that moment that it's time to take back what the devil has taken from you and, and, and you as you praise him you're believing i'm taking back what's mine you're going to take back your song and your dance and your joy and your peace and your health I call it your finances everything right now i call it in right now we're going to take it back as we worship him. Lord Father God, right now, I thank you that you're here with your people as we enter into your worship. We give you praise. Thank you. We give you glory, Lord Father God. Be with us right now. Change us, Lord Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand. Put your hands together. Yes. Friend of God. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. And is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's a man.
we have that you call us your friend that you call us your child you call us your son your daughter you love us so much Lord God and we thank you Father God for who you are where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom Where the Spirit of the Lord is There is freedom Lift your hands Lift your hands to heaven there is freedom. Lift your hands to heaven. There is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place.
Father God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love and your mercy that you bestow upon each one of us, Lord God. We know that it's by your grace that we're saved, and it's only by your grace, Father God. We thank you that you love us so much. Lord, we just ask that you take over the rest of this time this morning, Lord. We hear your word as we meet with you. You reveal yourself to us. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I've been wanting to come up here forever, but I'm here. I do want to thank you all for your prayers. My son has been off the ventilator for almost 48 hours. Off the ventilator after being on that ventilator for two months. Two months. There's nothing impossible with God. We have seen miracle after miracle after miracle. I mean, big ones. He was bleeding internally. Stop. Because they said his kidneys are going on. It's good. They said so many things. And God, but God, he is faithful. He is faithful. I'm telling you. There's nothing too hard for him. Nothing too hard for him. Nothing that we should worry about. Okay, worrying is doubting. Do not doubt. Our pastor used to say, doubt, do without. That's exactly what he used to say. So do not doubt. God is in control, not us. He's in control. That's not my son, that's his son. Okay, our family belongs to him. We don't have to worry about our family. Just one of my cousins just lost, the pastor just said, lost his son. Shot this morning. Okay, 30 years old, something like that. I mean, my son was, my grandson was at seven, eight times. And he's walking and he's so, it's working. I mean, God is faithful. We can't look at what we see. We have to look beyond. We have to take, like the Lord said, one day at a time. Okay, one day at a time. And you know what, I'm going to sing that song, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Okay, is that all right? I'm only human, I'm just a woman, help me believe in what I could be and all that I am, show me the stairway I have to climb, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Do you remember? When you walk the moment, well, Jesus, you know as you're looking below, that is worse now than then. Pushing and shoving, crowding my mind. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Thank you. 
God is good. Okay. And uh, Pastor Kelly. Right. Yeah. Amen. We're going to get right into the word. Amen. I heard there was lots of rain coming from San Bernardino, coming from La Mirada. It's not supposed to rain here, though. <laughs> I checked. I checked this morning. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 45 this morning. Isaiah chapter 45. And brothers and sisters, I don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to be reading off of my notes. Uh, because I don't want you to miss anything that I wrote down on here. I was up early, early <laughs> this morning last night and um there's a lot of chaos right now in our country and uh so i wanted to share some things with you regarding that chaos we're going to look now in isaiah chapter 45 we're going to look at verse 18 For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and the earth, and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, and not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. Yesterday, this canopy completely snapped and broke. Fernando, I'm so sorry everything there was several places in it that completely snapped and broke i don't even know if any of you noticed any change okay but we were here for about six or seven hours yesterday trying to fix this and thank you for those who came out to help and uh uh it was chaos uh it was unexpected and we have some great neighborhoods, uh, neighbors here in, in the neighborhood that, that look out and they'll call me right away. They'll send me videos. They'll send me pictures of what it looks like and what's happening. And so the wind and the rain that came from the, the weather yesterday in this area caused it to snap in those several different places. So let's talk about that for just a second. It, it was so chaotic yesterday. It, it, it still isn't funny. You ever see say something to someone that you can laugh about it later? I've been practically uh, in tears this morning over the attack that is happening, not just in this, this is a natural disaster, but we've got a huge natural disaster going on around us right now. And then on top of that, you know, we need to pray for our country because our country right now is not in agreement. Our country right now is not in unity. Our country right now are, are, are in opposition. And you know, God commands blessings on those who are in unity. Where there is unity, God commands blessing. I want our nation to be blessed. We need to be a people that come in unity and in agreement but i will say this that the immorality of the world has got me thinking so much back into the old testament when you look in the book of genesis and you see about sodom and gomorrah and what was happening in that time and they were praying oh well lord if there's at least 10 abraham's playing praying if there's at least 10 righteous will you spare the city and God is saying, okay, well, if there's 10, he goes, well, if there's five, how about if there's just five? And he goes on like that. If you read the story, there was none to be found righteous. 
And God took Abraham and he took his nephew Lot and he took his wife and out of there. And he says, do not look back. Do not desire the immorality. Do not desire the sinfulness that is happening. And, and, and Lot's wife turned back and something happened to her. Do you remember? She turned into a pillar of salt. And so we see that even after all that, and even after being told, don't look back, that how many of us, we've left the world, we've come to Christianity, we've come to God, we're serving the Lord, and we still have a desire for the world. We still have a desire for the old things that we used to do. And God is saying, don't look back. You may have been taken out of the world and to be taken and, and those things removed from you, but to be replaced for the goodness of God, to be replaced with the things of God. Yes the desire for God. You got to give, so take something away from your child. You got to give them something to replace what's just been taken from them. And God gives you his word. God gives you fellowship. God gives you a lot of things in this world. And, and we're to replace those things with his goodness and his mercy. But sometimes we get bored. We get bored with goodness when things are going good for us. But in this world right now, we're facing a lot of chaos. And this chaos, I want you to know, is the word Alpha and Omega means beginning and end. And when there's chaos, I'm going to tell you that right now, that is your Alpha. That is your beginning. But there's going to come an end where God is, you're going to see the miracle of God. You're going to see the outcome of God. You're going to see the hand of God move. You're going to see that because he cares that much about us. But if it wasn't for chaos in our life, we wouldn't be growing in him. We wouldn't be achieving heights in Christ and, and, and maturing in Christ. We wouldn't become at a level in him simply because if everything's going good, then we don't need him. But when there's chaos, guess what? We need him. And so that scripture is very clear when he says, he made the world to be lived in not to be a place of empty chaos. And he says, I am the Lord, there's no other. That word chaos means complete disorder and confusion. And another word for that word chaos is, is anarchy, disorder, pandemonium, madness, turmoil. And nobody, I don't know about you, but nobody likes chaos. When I came here yesterday and I saw everything that happened, you think we were real happy getting it done? Well, we were getting it done. And, uh, and then Sal arrived and changed the whole atmosphere. <laughs> yes, yes. But when you're first looking at everything, you can be overwhelmed with your circumstances. You ever been overwhelmed with your circumstances? And so we see that. We see that nobody likes that chaos. We don't like the chaos in our finances, our relationships, our emotions, our, 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 even in our children's bedrooms, toys thrown all over. We don't like the chaos. Sometimes we just leave it. Sometimes we're picking up over and over again. And we're teaching our children and we're training our children to do that. We don't like chaos in our world. And that's what's happening right now. Chaos creates a stress. It creates fear. And it causes our lives to be uh, upside down. You know, there's a, uh, this world, this earth. You read the scriptures in Ezekiel chapter 28. Isaiah chapter uh, 13, I believe. And, and it goes on. But this, this earth, it says that God picked up this earth and he shook it. And when he shook it, it caused everything. He said it turned it inside out. That's why, because before, in the beginning, in the beginning of days, you could walk and you were walking on beautiful emeralds and diamonds and stones and all these things. Everything, the gold, everything was on top. Where you were walking, everything that you could imagine that was beautiful was turned inside out. And that's why you have those, you know, that have to go in, their archaeological uh, pursuits that go into the ground and they're digging and finding and looking. People with metal detectors trying to find things. There was chaos. There was chaos in the very beginning of time. And there's chaos still today. And so we see that. That God, you know, he got this, this earth and he turned it inside down. But in our lives today, 
we also face that same thing where we feel like our life is is upside down you ever feel like everything's going wrong you look at genesis 1 and you see you know in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth the bible talks about that you know do you remember also with noah I talked to you about Sodom and Gomorrah very briefly, but do you remember in the days of Noah? Noah was considered to be the most righteous man in all the own, all the known earth at that time. And God spared him, his wife, and his children. And his in children, his son's wives, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and their wives, their family, to start this world all over again. But God allowed that flood to come and destroy the earth. But he spared life and it began all over again from all the chaos, everything. Now, I don't know about you, but if, if you're reading in the word and you're studying about end times, then you already know that this world is going to, this earth is going to burn up. It's going to be, it's going to be on fire. It's going to burn. There, the Bible talks about that there is going to be a new earth. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be here when this earth gets on fire. And if you were looking around just recently, you've seen some pretty crazy fires that were happening throughout the land. You were hearing about some pretty good earthquakes that were happening in our world. You're, you're seeing these things, but it's, it's not clicking. We don't, we're not catching it. And so, you know, there's chaos all the time, but with chaos, there comes miracles. You, you couldn't stand up here and give a testimony if it wasn't for the chaos, the chaos of, of, of the pursuit in your finances, Jacob, if you didn't have the money to pay those educational bills and all of that stuff, that's considered a, a chaotic situation. But when God opened up the door and provided, yes. as Jehovah Jireh always does, so out of chaos, we find creation, and, and it, it, it's like a pattern that develops in around anything that God is doing. So we, we see a piercing light coming out of the endless darkness. God speaks, and he says, let there be light. Let there be light. Dry land that is emerging from out of the tossing sea. All the earth has been destroyed with the floods, and you're, all of a sudden on the mount, we see a little bit of plant life all of a sudden the waters begin to recede all of a sudden we're seeing the miraculous hand of god moving we, we see in the old testament in the book of exodus with with uh moses and we see that with moses that we see water coming out of a rock right we 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 see in the wilderness you know the wilderness is is like it reminds me of cain and abel because Cain, after he killed his brother Abel, it says that he was, a mark was put on him, and he was considered a, a vagabond and a wanderer in the land of Nod. And he just wandered around aimlessly, basically. And, and that mark, we don't know what it was, but, but everybody knew what it was, and they knew that they could not touch him, kill him, harm him in any way. God already had dealt very strictly with him. But we see that. We see that God is in control. We, we see that we have a Redeemer when he sent Jesus to die on the cross. Because of our fallen world, God provided an answer, and that answer is Jesus. There's a storm. You look in the New Testament, you see Jesus in the New Testament at the Sea of Galilee. And you can see that there's a storm that's beginning to begin. And you can see that everybody might be beginning to die. You ever been in a position, maybe on an airplane, that, that loses, you know, the mechanical working? Uh, there's disarray and plane crashes or a train crashes or something happens. You can see this. You, you're almost ready about to die. Maybe, you know, when my brother, when my brother David had just graduated from high school, 18 years old, and him and his three friends, Russell, and Joe, and Greg, all decided we're gonna go on a summer vacation. And they all packed up and they all drove and they went to Lake Tahoe. And they go into the lake 
and they rented a boat and and they had some mechanical problems with it they had to take it back to the people and told them hey it's not working right you know and they said okay well you know we don't have one right now they and they, they were walking away they said oh we just got one back in we just got a, a boat back in we're gonna check you know check everything and then you can rent that so they were all excited they got in it and 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 while they were out and, and I'm gonna tell you this due diligence is so important for you for me that means that before you step into something before you take action on something you've counted the cost you've researched it you you've looked into every possible avenue and every possible result and you and you come out you know with peace about the decisions that you're making they got into that boat the four of them and as they went into the boat if you've ever been to lake tahoe it is a huge lake people have drowned in there and have died and their bodies sink to the bottom of the lake and freeze and they never find them because it's so deep because they, they are not able to do that and while they were out there in the middle of the lake they start having some problems with the boat all of a sudden water starts coming in so they start flipping out the cushions that didn't they just gathered all the water and sunk they weren't life supported at all they would open up the doors underneath where the cushions were open up the doors to look for the life jackets and there are no life jackets this is why i say that due diligence is so important for you and i before we step out and 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 into something rashly and as they were there and nothing for them the boat finally filled up and sank my brother david my brother russell my brother joe his, all his friends, brother Joe, uh, Greg, all of them were athletes, strong, on the football team. They were strong. But it's the will to live that makes the difference. It's the will to live and it's the... My mom said, Dave, before you go, David, I want you to come home, come over here to the house, bring your friends because I want to pray for you before you go. He said, all right. He told his friends and only Joe showed up to be prayed for. Joe shows up with David and that's ready for leave. The other guys aren't going to come. And my mom prays for them. My mom was like a really holy roller. I mean, speaking in tongues and on fire for God. And, and I don't know if that, so they felt fear of that. I don't know what, what it was, but they didn't come. And in that water that day, as they're in that lake, my brother David and all of them, they said, let's stay together. We got to stay close together. Don't separate you guys. Let's, the, it was starting to get five, like right now, how it's getting early right now. It was starting to get dark. The sun was going down. The waters are dark and choppy. And it started to get windy, more windy. And, and it was getting worse and it was getting worse. And they're there and they were so far away from, from land, there was no way that they could they needed a miracle they needed a miracle to take place and as they were there they're all looking at each other and then my brother said he turned away and he and he's saying hey i think i see like a like a boat like one of those um uh tour boats and 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 he turns back he says hey we're i think we see something one of his friends was gone and they said where's so-and-so where's russell where's russell russell was the first one or or i don't know if it's russell or greg one of them was gone and they started to panic and become anxious and they began to look look for him and then they said we have to stay together we have to stay together and then all of a sudden one of them also he wore glasses and he didn't have good vision and I don't know if it was because he separated so far away from them that, that, that he didn't see them and he lost hope. I don't know what happened, but all I know is that, that he also drowned. His both his friends, he didn't actually see them so that he could try to help save them, 
but there was some points when they were close together, like they were getting tired, and and I believe one of them, Russell, it may have been, is 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 pulling on my brother, pulling on my brother, that my brother had to like, like he's trying to save also his own self, and when you come around a person who's panicked and and anxious, he had to like pull his arm off, and to have to live with something like that for the rest of your life knowing that they died and you also had pushed them off. Could you imagine having to live with something like that? But just imagine being in a lake, being on a plane, being on a train, anywhere, any of those places like that. Our situation is so bad. Our prayers, Jim Smith said, our prayers do not define God. They merely cause him to reveal himself to us through the chaos of the situation. Let me say that again. Our prayers do not define God. They merely cause him to reveal himself to us through the chaos of the situation. How many of us find ourselves in a chaotic situation right now. God is going to reveal himself. God is going to come and he's going to show you. Just because what we're praying for over is a really bad situation, it does not mean that God is a really bad God. What, what if, if, if he's weak, if he's weak, oh geez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Our prayers don't define what God is. When we're going through something bad, like I said, it doesn't make him a bad God. But it gives him the opportunity to show you and I how good, how powerful that he is. Amen? Amen. That's what our chaos is. Now, if you're looking for God to move, if you're looking for a miracle in your life, you probably do not need to look for one in a place where there's serenity and peace. Because if there's serenity and peace, you're good. Amen. You usually don't call on God when everything is going good. You may be thankful, but you don't have a need to really call on him for his help. Rather in a place where things are not stable, where there's chaos, where these things, this is where if you're looking for God to move, is where you're going to see the miracles. In the areas of your life, where there's serenity and peace, we're going to thank God for that. But realize that if there is serenity, then you really don't need a miracle, do you? You don't need a miracle if you're having peace and serenity. But we don't live in a perfect world at all. <laughs> How many days do we see that? Every day we see that we don't live in a perfect world. Pastor Nick used to say that, you know, if you're not happy with the church and and you end up leaving and you go somewhere else to that church, you know, he, he, he would say, when you get there, you're taking the problem with you. You're taking that problem with you. Whatever the mentality is that we're feeling, whatever we're thinking, that we're taking that with us, you know. And so he would he would tell us, you know, the, the, the problems are with you. And that church ain't going to be perfect no more once we go over there with our problems, right? <laughs> Amen. So we can focus right now just on the chaos in our life. Just look at some of the areas. The areas in our life that may be out of place. Maybe the place where nothing is what you want it to be. God will work in our life if we let him. In Psalm 46, 6, this is what it says in the New Living Translation. That the nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. Amen? Amen. 
people, you know, sometimes can be saying, like, man, everything's a real mess right now. I can't believe that this has happened, or, or my life is a complete disaster right now. But then, what it says right here in Psalm 46, then something happens. God's voice thunders. The voice of chaos is saying hopelessness. The voice of chaos is saying death, ruin, disaster, all of these things. But his voice supersedes that voice of chaos, supersedes that hopelessness in our life, and it supersedes the impossibilities and the desperation of this world. Amen? In Revelation 1.8, it says that I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters in the Greek alphabet. And Jesus declared that in his revelation, when he spoke to the Apostle John, and he says in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says he is in the beginning, and he is the end. That no matter what the chaos is going on in our world, that he is still God, and he is still going to work if we let him move in us through us. Amen? And as I shared with you earlier, nobody likes the beginning, all the chaos, all the mess, all the dis disturbance, none of that, none of that. We don't like any of that. We don't like the trouble that we have in our lives, but we do love it when a miracle shows up, right? We have quite a few miracles that we've seen. Many of us have given testimony of the, of the miracles that God has done. So we need to understand that he's the alpha, he's the omega. And, and, and that alpha is the beginning or that chaos in our life. But just hold on, hold on to the hope. Hold on to the hope because the omega, which is the end result, the miracle is going to take place. Amen. If everything in life was perfect, if everything was, you know, my husband used to say hunky-dory, if, if everything was good, then, then we wouldn't need God would be basically in heaven. Amen? Amen. But we're not in heaven yet, brothers and sisters. <laughs> so we, we're, we're living in a fallen world. We're living in a place that needs God. We need God. People in the world need God. There's chaos that's here. That chaos here, we need God's help. So chaos, I also want you to know, is not some kind of punishment in your life. Okay? It's not some kind of, you know, something that was handed down to you for something that, that you did. Chaos basically is just, you know, God. Uh, it's, your, it's your alpha. Basically, it's your alpha. Amen. It's a place where, where God brings us and needs us to trust him for our omega or for our miracle. I'm almost done here, but <laughs> no, no matter how impossible it may seem, God, God is always going to bring something out of the chaos in our life if we ask him. We must ask. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Right? Yes. Amen. Anyways, <laughs> God can do a miracle in, in, in the chaos. God can bring salvation in the chaos. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you a passage of scripture, and then I'm going to read my closing statement. But many of you are already familiar with this passage in Ezekiel. On the Valley of Dry Bones. Amen. Amen. It says, uh, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. And he led me all around the bones that covered the valley floor. And they were scattered everywhere across the ground and they were completely dried out. And then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? He says, oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. And then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord, sovereign Lord says, look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Amen? 
I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and I will, and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. In verse 7 it says, So I spoke this message just as he told me. And suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as skeletons. Pastor Kay did a sermon on this at her church and she had skeletons coming coming out from all over the place like they were down on the floor and then as she was giving her sermon the skeletons came to life. I don't know how she did it. But but that's God God can do something like that. And this is what he just says, Then as I watched the muscles and the flesh formed over the bones and the skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. And then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, This is what the Lord, sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded, and breath came into their bodies, bodies, and they all came to life. They stood upon their feet, a great army. Now, when you read this text, you find that Ezekiel is prophesying right there. It says that the Bible says that the four winds came together. It wasn't four little comfortable breezes. Can you imagine these breezes that we're having right now? What it was like for God to bring forth these bones. Could you imagine what was happening? I, I imagine little tornadoes just happening all over the place. The the strength of the of the breath of God, the word of God. And so you, you, you don't see comfortable little breezes. You don't have these four winds that, that are blowing on the valley that they're filled with strength. And so that winds, those winds, they represent You've got this eastern breeze blowing against the western breeze. They're blowing against the northern, the southern. And, and, you, and what begins to happen is that whether it was a tornado, whether it was a hurricane, I don't know, but something like that hit that valley. What's amazing is that God made a promise that he was going to raise these people up, that he was going to cause these dry bones to live again. And he told the prophet, speak or pray for these bones that they would live it says hear ye the word of the lord and when god made this promise the wind began to blow and can you imagine what that looked like to the natural eye just i mean we're getting a very small little taste this morning of the wind of god but can you imagine what that looked like there was a storm that was brewing there was a storm that was beginning to happen and it was picking up strength it was picking up wa the waters it was just getting bigger and bigger. Only our imagination can tell us what we think it looked like. Now, chaos is what it began to look like with all those dry bones. Can you imagine all these bones just coming up? Can you imagine what it looked like, the chaos in that place, what was happening? And so the storm was blowing, the four winds were blowing, there's a tornado, there's a hurricane, there's effects of everything. The bones that were over there are over here, they're over there. And by the time God got through with what he was going to do, he had a vast army all set up. He even says in the word that if you won't praise him, he says, I'll even have the rocks cry out and praise him. God will be praised. God will have his army. God will have his way and his will and his plan and his purpose completed and done with or without us. That's the God we serve. I want to be right there with him. I want to be used by God. I want him to reveal himself. I, and I'm not even going to say this. I want him to even slap my hand. That means that when I'm doing something wrong, when I'm not going in the right direction, that he speaks to me so clearly that I can hear him. Amen. That I'm not going to be led into a wrong direction. That I'm not going to be taken. He's going to take me exactly where he needs to take me, where he wants to take me, so that I can be fully used of the Lord. Now, as we see there in that passage of scripture, 
And I, I want uh, the last scripture I want to share with you is in Ezekiel right here in closing. Ezekiel chapter 37. Which we just read, but I want us to see again in verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And that's exactly what he does. It looked like the wind was there to destroy. Listen to this very carefully. It looked like the wind was there to destroy what God was trying to do. But it breathed life into the death that was in the valley. Are you going through a valley in your life? Does it look like everything is in opposition to you? Do you feel like you're wondering what God is doing? He breathed life into those bones and everything looked chaotic. Everything looked so bad. But what he was really doing was he was breathing life into the death that was in that valley. God breathed life into the death in your valley that you're going through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. We thought that the chaos in our life, the miracles that we, we see all the time to help us with our faith and help us to believe Him and help Him to trust Him, we thought it was there, that chaos and everything, that we were feeling that we were going to be destroyed, that we were feeling like we, we were going to lose it. But in, in reality, we were going through all of that. It was there, the chaos was there to give us life. To give us life, to give us breath, to give us hope, to give us strength. The, 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 with, without faith, without faith it's impossible to please God. But with faith, all things are possible. And every bit of the chaos that we go through in our life is simply to build our faith, to take us through the valleys in our life and take us into the high peaks of those mountains. Amen? That's what God is doing in our life. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your understanding, your love, and patience. Amen.